All right, guys, I'm back again, and this is the Detroit Retro Game Show 2024. So let's get inside and see what we get. I don't know, we've been here for maybe an hour, 40 minutes or so. Lots of broken systems and lots of untested systems. So it's going pretty well so far. I'm gonna head back in and keep hunting. So here's a quick little overview, just kind of give you guys a vibe of what the convention looked like if you haven't been to this one before. Um, yeah, it was really nice this year and very, it was even more spacious than last year. Um, it seemed like there was maybe a little less vendors, but as you can see, it was packed. This was like maybe an hour or so in. It was right after I filmed that little pick up there. But as you can see, the floor is full of people buying games. So there was definitely a lot, a lot of people there this time. Um, so thankfully there was a decent amount of walking room. They had a little free play area set up over here, and so they had a bunch of just different consoles and people were playing them, like there's a PS1 there, a Jaguar set up. And yeah, it's pretty cool when they do stuff like this so people can experience consoles that they don't already own or haven't played in a long time. So um, I like the little Pong set up there on the old school 70s TV, very cool. Um, definitely a nice little setup here. Here's one of the booths. I kind of just picked a few random clips here of some of the booths, but... Yeah, everyone had everything really nicely laid out and displayed real nicely. And you can see everything here is just laid out on tables and spread all over. It's just tons and tons and tons of games and systems. Um, if you guys haven't been to a game convention before and you collect, you really need to make it a point to go, even if it's a decent amount of traveling. It's just really fun to hunt through this stuff and see a lot of cool things you've never seen before. So, yeah, let's get on to the pickups. Okay, I just got back home um, from the retro game show in Detroit. And, yeah, that was... Pretty, it was pretty fun. Um, it was pretty successful this year. Not as much as last year. If you guys haven't seen that video, go check it out. But yeah, still a pretty good success. Um, I wasn't expecting to get as much this year. I really didn't want to because I just got so many big lots lately. I really should not be buying this stuff, but um, I can't contain myself when I see this stuff. So you gotta buy it. So I'm gonna kind of go through everything here and just quickly show you guys kind of what I bought. One mentality I do have, just like I think I explained this in my last video, but when I'm at these game shows, it's really hard to get deals on games. This is a tip for like the resellers out there. Don't focus on the games. Like don't look at the GameCube games and the Pokemon games. The reality is the people at the shows know those games are gonna sell for full price, so don't even bother. You wanna look at things that most people wouldn't want, like broken Xboxes and Atari 5200s and stuff like that. Just because they're not as popular and they're bulky and the sellers just wanna get rid of them and they don't want to bother repairing them and if they don't sell online like we were talking to some vendors there that we knew this stuff broken stuff is really hard to move um at these conventions and at game stores it just does not sell so basically that's kind of the mentality i had this year is just to kind of buy the junk nobody wanted <laughs> so yeah i'll kind of go through so the these guys that set up there they know me for buying broken stuff and they um called me over um so i'll show you all their stuff first i saw i got a broken ps5 slim that i got for 150 i believe so that's a pretty good deal they said it does not power on they don't really know anything else than that there's a bag of 10 psps this was also from them i did a bundle um for 300 for the ps5 and 10 psp they all have chargers they all have notes on them saying um yeah dead umb so this one must not read games so yeah, a bunch of broken PSPs. Um, and again, like these are super easy. I can get like 40 bucks a piece for these for parts and move on. I'm probably not going to really do any repairs, maybe the computers and stuff, because I'm just more familiar with that stuff. I'm not familiar with repairing PSPs or PS5 Slims. I've never even had a Slim before now. So it's my first Slim. So yeah, that was a good deal. Spending 300 between these two. Let's see what else I got from them. And then they brought me to their car. And I got three broken Xboxes, um, a PS2 Fat, and a PS2 Slim, and the 5200 for 65 bucks. So that was a really good deal there. It's like 10 bucks a system, pretty much. And the 5200 had a controller, so that helps a lot. Um, I also got this Vic 20 from them. I paid 70 for that in the box it's really really clean and it came with some software as well something fun to, to go through and kind of check it out but definitely a great deal there um this is the first thing i picked up i got an atari 400 he had 50 on that uh, i'm not sure if it works and a sega nomad 
for, he had 200 on it. Yes, so I, I got both of those for 225. And the main reason I bought the Nomad is because it has the battery pack and it does not have corrosion. So I should be able to get over 100 at least, a um, little over 100 for the battery pack alone. And the Nomad will be profit. He said it works, but you know how that goes. <laughs> Capacitors go bad in those a lot. Two broken SPs. This is from someone I knew. I kind of paid up a little bit for these. Um, I got both of them for 60. Um, the other one's down there. So they don't read games, so we'll have to see. Normally that's a problem with the cartridge slot, but um, who knows. Game Gears. I got these from him as well, and these Game Boys. Um, I think I paid 40 for the three Game Gears. Um, that's a really good deal. Um, I'll just put them on eBay for like 90 bucks and a lot. And that should move pretty quickly. Um, and these are from the same guy. I bought these for 20 a piece. And I should be able to get around 40 a piece for parts. I'll do a lot of two for 80. So that was good because I had 40 into those. So that's, that's okay. Um, quick money. I like buying the broken stuff like this because it's just so low effort. Like these, I don't even have to do anything with them. I can just list them just as they are and, and profit off of them. And these ones with the lines, um, I could fix it. I could open it and um, resolder the just add heat to the bottom of the screen, but it's not really a long lasting repair. And you know, when I'm selling stuff, I want it to last a really long time for the people who buy it. Um, just another random thing like this PSP, um, PS1 Slim case I got for five bucks, kind of in rough shape, but um, yeah, they sell pretty quick for me. Um, so earlier I got this Nintendo, I think I paid 15 for that, and then the same guy paid 10 for this Genesis as well um i'm gonna pull these two boxes out this is from one guy i'm not really sure even what i got so let's see okay so i bought these kind of blind um as they were behind his booth and the guy i bought them from he mainly does vintage computers um which i'm into and i was talking to him and he's really nice but he had these behind the thing i'm like are you selling that stuff he's like yeah he's like i just got them from a recycler i'm like oh okay so basically i paid 175 for the two boxes or 170 something like that i can't exactly remember but right away I saw there was four N64s and three of them had expansion packs. So, I mean, that alone is, you know, 150 bucks all day long. Um, there's a copy of Banjo-Tooie. So, that was, I mean, this is a really good deal for sure. Um, and then just a lot of cables. Like, here's a Namco or a Hudson um, like four-player adapter for Super NES. That'd be, like, for Bomberman. Bunch of random controllers. Sony. Oh, I'm not even sure what this is. It's for a PlayStation. Or no, it's not. I don't know. Maybe for a camcorder? Not sure. But a lot of random stuff. Atari joysticks. Atari paddles. Namco plug and play. Ooh, nice. GameCube link cable. It's worth like 25 bucks. Um, OEM GameCube controller. A lot of good stuff in here. Just going to my cables, but <laughs> let's make sure these aren't for the GameCube. Doubt it. Really tangled up, you guys. So, let's see. Uh, looks like they're for Xbox. Here's one of these Xbox little S video boxes. Those are pretty cool. Let's get these cables out. Let's see where they are. Uh, oh, they are OEM. PS2. So those are probably worth like 30 bucks. Cool. So yeah, really good deal here. Dreamcast controllers, there's an Xbox hard drive, um, clear blue dual track 2. Just a bunch of good stuff. So yeah, I know it was quick, um, <laughs> this video, but that's basically it. So just like I said before, if you're going to these conventions and you're not looking for your collection, you're really just going there to try to find some stuff to sell, I really recommend you look at the weird things <laughs> that the, the sellers don't think they can sell or that they're just the markets they're in like this stuff just isn't good locally at all like if i was to sell this a lot on marketplace i would not do well at all i mean maybe this one i would but like the rest of this stuff it would be i would <laughs> not even get my money back so you really got to sell online for this kind of stuff and so that's kind of what you want to take advantage of you want to find things that you can do better on online that these um, people that own stores can't do as well on. Um, but yeah, either way, guys, it was a really good show. I enjoyed it. 
Uh, very roomy this year, as you could see in those clips before. There was a lot of people there. Um, they had the VIP passes, but apparently, I, which I did not do this year. I did it last year. But this year they raised it to 50 and I'm like, eh, and I had someone with me, so it would have been like 100 bucks to get in. And I'm like, eh, let's just do the normal pass, because I already have so much stuff as it is. I'm like, eh, if I miss some deals, that's okay. So um, the normal tickets were 15 bucks a person, which I felt was, was a lot more reasonable <laughs> than the 50. Anyway, that was it this year, guys. Um, <laughs> I'll be making a video every show, pretty much. I'll be making a video. So if you want to subscribe to see the next year, then go ahead. So anyway, thanks so much for watching, you guys. Um, have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.